welcome to my humble homestead and garden side chat. Well, today we're gonna spend the day just doing some things in the kitchen, around the house. It is March and I was just like getting some things out. And let me tell you, let me show you what it looks like here in North Dakota in, in March here. Look at this, let me show you. This is, now the snow's lightened up a bit, but remind, let me tell you that I had snow removal yesterday. We can't, let me, let me open the door here. We can't even find my driveway. Oh gosh, Ugh, hilarious. All right, look at, do we see a driveway there anywhere? <laughs> I have no clue. March guys, a little bit over it. This is the snow we have. Still falling from the sky a little bit. Not so much, but we still have blizzard warnings. So we'll see what happens. But I just hope some miraculous thing happens and we have some increase in temperatures and this goes away. I mean, I don't want to flood or anything, mind you, but I'm a little over it. I started my seeds which I am gonna go check on later because I did see some sprouts and I wanna go take care of those, take the ones out of the dome that are sprouting and put them just below. But anyway, so today, let me bring you down here. I'm gonna do some things. The first thing, I need to get some things together for my kitchen. So I am out here of my disinfectant wipes. Part of the things that I do to save money and just health wise is I make my own disinfectant wipes. Super easy, super inexpensive so much less toxic. I think they smell much better. So I did show this in another video where I made my own lip balm, but it took me forever to find it. So I thought since it took me to find it, I will add it on this video again. Um, I've also had a couple people ask for it. Let's go ahead and make this together. All right. So I'm going to start with this because then I can use my, what I like to do is just keep these and take one out and wipe everything up as I'm uh, making things. So I just use, and yes, for my cleaning stuff, I do use plastic containers. I try to use mostly glass when I cook. Um, I'm, you know, that's what I try to do. I don't have 100% glass. So these are these little, and Walmart, they had like a box of these little microfiber cloths for like five bucks. There's, I think there's like 80 of them. And I just re see, you see this one's kind of dingy because I, I rewash them until they're just not usable anymore and I throw them. I literally have maybe thrown one or two. So I throw these in here and then I just cut up old towels and t-shirts. They work as well. So I start by putting these in my bucket like that and then white vinegar this is my cleaning vinegar i use the white vinegar for cleaning i put maybe about a cup like a, i don't measure you guys can measure so maybe about a cup cup and a half then rubbing alcohol this is what makes it like super disinfectant, cleans like 99% point whatever of the dirt. So I put about a quarter of a cup in there. I just, and I kind of put it in a little, I mean, you could do it before you put the rags in there too, but I just kind of put it in a little bot corner there. And then about a cup of water. Um, I do use distilled water or I just take it out of my refrigerator or you can just boil water too. So as you see, that's kind of a lot. Now, to make it smell good, what I do, so I usually use the lemongrass and the tea tree for most of my cleaning products. Tea tree does offer some extra, tea tree and eucalyptus offer some extra antibacterial. Lemon, I like citrus in the way that my stuff smells. The other one that I use in my disinfectant wipes is orange and geranium. I'm almost thinking about combining the three. Uh, yeah, I think I'm gonna do the three. I'm gonna do lemongrass, the tea tree, and the geranium. Just That just sounds good to me. So I'm just gonna move these over. And in my little water at the bottom, I'm gonna do six of each. I usually do, si I usually do six of each of the two. So I'm gonna do 
two, three, four, five, six. And then I'm just gonna do six of the tea tree and six of the lemongrass and I shake it up. Come on, it's not coming out. One, two, three, four. And then the lemongrass. Uh-oh, lemongrass is like one of my favorites. This one might be gone. It is, no worries. I always have lemongrass. <laughs> I use this in my bug repellent in the summer too. So I will always have lemongrass and I grow it in my garden too. There we go. All right, so then what I do is I just put this on and then I flip it upside down and I shakey, 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 shake. Pretty good, get them all mixed up in there. And then when I need to wipe something off, I just take one out and I wring it out and I have a bunch of these in the washing machine right now, so when they come out and dry, I'll just throw these in too, because there's that's why I get it so wet. Ugh, and it smells so good. And then I just use it to like wipe down my countertops here and stuff. Like this. And then this one, I mean since my countertop's clean, I'll just hang on the sink and I'll just use this for the rest of the time while I'm cooking. So since it has disinfected, I mean, unless there's, I cook with something gross, like, I mean, not gross, but you know what I mean? Like meat or something, then I'll toss it and use a new one. That is how I make my disinfectant wipes. All right. So the next thing on my agenda is, see how I'm still out of breath, you guys. It's just, it's sad. It's so sad. I think I, I have some breathe right over there with eucalyptus. I think what I might do is turn on my um, brain fog, whatever the thing is that I you call that I put <laughs> oils in. Oh my gosh, I can't even think today and put and put my oils in. Anyway, what I'm going to do is I have all of this burger in my fridge that I found in my freezer. So I found all of this burger here. I pulled it all out of my freezer. And this is what I'm going to use to make a big old pot of burger soup. And I'm going to make a big pot of burger soup because I have some canned tomatoes and I have, oh, I forgot to pull them out of the freezer. Shoot. Well, that's okay. I'm going to pull them out of the freezer. I'm going to rinse them off so I can pull the skins off. I have a bunch of tomatoes in my freezer as well that I never canned. I never got to canning those. So I'm just going to rinse those off in my sink and take the skins off throw those in my pot. That was the reason why I was doing this is to use up my, uh, I found that burger after my pantry challenge. I'm going to rinse off the tomatoes and skin them. And then I'm going to throw those in, use up some of my canned tomatoes, my frozen organic veggies from Aldi, make a big, and some of my dried herbs and stuff, make a big pot of burger soup. I'll take you along for that. And then I'll probably can a bunch of it. So, all right, see you in a bit. Welcome back everybody. So right now I am just going to brown up this burger that I had found. It's still frozen. I took it out of my freezer last night and I put it in my fridge to thaw. It's partially thawed. I mean, I could have just did it in my Instapot, which I normally do, but since I'm making a big pot of soup in here, I'm just gonna brown it up. I also had some onions in my freezer that were in a freezer bag that I wanted to use up so they didn't get freezer burned. I do have some fresh onions, but I'll find something else to use those for. So I have some garlic, onion, ground beef in here. I'm gonna add just a few peppercorns. I need to grind up some more pepper. So I'm gonna add just a few peppercorns in here and a little bit of salt to start out with just to get this meat browning. And while this is browning, I'm just gonna go over to the sink and I'm going to take the skin off of those tomatoes. I've had them soaking in cold water just to try to um, loosen the skin off of them. And then I'm gonna take those off and then when this is brown, I'm gonna throw that in there. And then for broth, I have this tomato juice, this canned tomato juice that I saved. I'm going to throw, I have a thing of chicken broth, and then I also have this lamb broth I'm going to throw in here. And then with the tomatoes in this, I'm just going to let it cook down in the chicken broth. I'm going to see how that looks, and then I'm going to see how much more liquid I need to use at that point. I'm going to just start 
cleaning stuff off of my pantry and going with that. So I'm going to let this brown up. I'm going to go take the skin off the tomatoes and then I will see you back. I was going to see if I could show you how easy this comes off here. So I'm just rinsing these under cold water and I just am peeling them and literally they just, oh for goodness, now it's not going to do it as awesome, but I was just getting these huge pieces and they just peel off. They're still partially frozen. Let me find one. Oh. And they just peel off just like this. I did not can these or process them. I'm just going to put them directly into my soup and mush them up that way. It would be easier if they were a little more thawed, but they're not. <laughs> so I was supposed to take them out last night and I did not. It's just going to take me a little extra time. See you in a bit. these frozen tomatoes I am putting them in right away because they're frozen and I think it's gonna be like a all day <laughs> cooking them down since they're frozen which I think it's gonna give it just layers and layers of flavor I'm so excited when I watch Becky from Acre Home she always talks about layering flavors in so I'm hoping this works I'm trying to take some notes from all my fellow homesteaders and chefs and people that I watch. So I'm hoping this is going to add some extra depth of flavor. I put some bay leaves in there, some Italian seasoning. I put my green powder, my Z powder, just a bunch of other things in there to add some extra flavors. So I'm going to keep working on these tomatoes. I did take out some homemade applesauce. I was going to make some applesauce bread in my bread machine because I'm still, my son sent me a Snapchat of him snow blowing his driveway. So I was hoping that that meant that he was still gonna bring the kids over so him and his wife could go on a date night. So I'm um, fingers crossed, I'm hoping they still come over. And then um, I'll walk you over, my, my kitchen's starting to become a mess because of all the things that I'm doing here. But, um, so, oops, I forgot my So I'm hoping that that means that he's still gonna bring the kids over. So I thought what I'd do is I'd grind up some wheat berries and make a regular loaf of bread while that's cooking because that would make a yummy supper for uh, Peyton and Harrison with some bread. Uh, this delicious uh, hamburger soup with some bread. I thought that would be delicious. So I'm hoping they'll come over. We'll let you know. But I'm going to keep working on. I have these tomatoes left in here. Okay, so now I have all the tomatoes in there. It is looking and smelling amazing. And I'm trying to make a big pot because I'm gonna can some up to have some on my shelf. So I do have two quarts of chicken broth, one pint of tomato sauce. I don't think I'm gonna put any more canned tomatoes in here because these are plenty of tomatoes but I did find two jars of onion broth in my freezer that I am defrosting in cold water in my sink and I thought oh my gosh that would be delicious so if I need any more liquid after all of these cooked down and all of that other liquid I will add those I think that would add some delicious flavor all right so now I'm gonna go find my recipe for the bread and I will grind up my wheat berries and we will move on to that. See you in a minute. So here is the status on the burger soup so far. So I added a few bags of the organic Aldi vegetables 
I added in a can of green beans and a can of carrots with the liquid. So that added in some more liquid. I added in a half of the jar that has been defrosting of the both of the onion broths. And we're just gonna keep letting this simmer. Over here, I'm just gonna grind up these wheat berries here. I'm just gonna make a loaf of bread and let that cook and rise while the soup is cooking. See you in a bit. I'll show you as I bake it. I'm just not gonna show you as the grinder goes because it's really loud. And I did show you the unboxing video of this grinder and how it works. It does work really well. I'm happy with it. Okay, see you soon. Okay, welcome back friends. So I am going to go ahead and make a loaf of bread here in my bread machine. I just ground up the last of my, this is the soft wheat berries. I need less of this one. You guys, when you grind up your own flour, it smells so fresh and delicious. There's just nothing better than it. And if you are gluten-free and you need to do like oat flour or almond flour, you know, it's so easy and much more cost-effective to grind up your own that way too. A lot of times I'll sift it. I do have a sifter. Honestly, I'm not gonna, I'm making a whole grain bread. I don't mind that it's gonna have all of the thick grains in it. I'm actually putting some steel cut oats in it as well. So it'll be more of a dense bread. Rinse that out here in a moment. For my bread machine, I have this bread pan and it comes with this little measuring cup. I'm actually using a recipe out of the book. It says 170 milliliters of water and it measures it right in there. So I'm just going to go ahead and add that there. Then the next ingredient is two big spoons. It has a big and a little spoon. Two big spoons of butter. So this would be one. I'm assuming the big spoon is a tablespoon. There, so we got two big spoons, and they want you to put these in in the order that they're red. So, oh, actually, I'm gonna do the bigger loaf. The bigger, so I'm gonna do 210 milliliters of water. One moment, and 40 more milliliters. It says three big spoons of butter. So let me add another big spoon of butter there. Okay, and then one small spoon of salt. Spoon of salt. 3.5 ounces of whole wheat flour. And then it says 10.6 ounces of strong flour. I'm not sure what they mean by that. So what I did was I have the soft wheat flour and I have my hard wheat berry flour. Let me see, I'm gonna see how much of the soft wheat, usually when you make bread you use the soft wheat flour. So I'm gonna see how much I have of that. I'm gonna see if I have the 10.6 ounce. Okay, so. This is almost eight ounces, which is, I mean, a cup. Yeah, a cup, which is eight ounces. So I'm just gonna, I'm gonna use all of the soft wheat that I ground, and then I'm gonna finish it off with the hard wheat. Eight, and then we need 2.6. All right, then we need 3.5 ounces of whole wheat flour. So I'm just gonna use this. And then 3.5, it says healthy oats. So I am definitely gonna use my steel cut oats. That in there as well. And then it says one egg. So I took out three eggs because I wasn't sure if I was gonna get to the, the applesauce bread. These are the ones that I had preserved. I got that one and I rinsed them off. And one small spoon of baking powder. And that is it. All right, so now let's put this in to the bread machine here. Clean all of this up. Time to run the dishwasher. Okay, let's go ahead and plug in this bread machine and get this bread going. My son is only halfway done with his driveway, so I honestly don't know if they're gonna make it over. But let's see what multi-grain bread is eight. So we go, we go three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And then we hit 
start. Ta-da, and then let the machine do the work. And then I think before I sit down and take a break, I think I'm gonna make some chia pudding to have another option. I did make farmer's porridge, but if you all saw my little going into town disaster I had the other day, I chia seeds was one of the things in bulk I was in order. So after that, I came home, took a nice hot shower, and it takes my hair a long time to dry. So I thought, I'm just going to go online and see what I can find because I can use my MasterCard at Costco online. So I did order some bulk things online at Costco. I, one of the things I did, so I ordered some chia seeds. So I'm going to use up the chia seeds I have and make some chia pudding. And honestly, you guys, I do this different every time as well. I knew I had those measuring cups out for something. A can of coconut milk here. But you know what I'm going to use instead of this? I got almond milk and I got some plain Greek yogurt. So I think I'm going to use both of those. All right, that will be perfect. And then, let's see. So what I do is, super simps, I just take two tablespoons of chia seeds in each of these smaller jars. And these are great because they can sit in your fridge, you know, for like a week. And I, I do like them with coconut milk too. They kind of add a little coconutty taste. And I do have like some dried kiwi and, you know, dried fruits that I put in there sometimes with them. So, and actually, I think I'm going to get that. That's not, I kind of do whatever sounds good. And when I was looking through my pantry for stuff to put in my soup... I found, I believe these are nectarine or peaches. Yes, I think they're either peaches or nectarine and kiwi. I'm going to take out my little pack thing here. I'm going to put some of these in there, make it a little tropical. I also bought bananas, so if I even want to eat them, if I want to slice a little banana in there, that will be good and that will add my sweetness. I also sometimes put a little bit of vanilla in there because I don't think I got... I did not get vanilla almond milk. And this was on sale at Costco, so I did get it. I didn't have any almonds to make my own or cashews. So I just put just a little bit of, a little drop. Not a lot because, like I said, I'm waiting until November when I go back to the Caribbean to get more. I know a lot of you make your own, but um, I thought I was going to actually try that. But one, I don't have the vanilla beans. Two, I was going to buy a bottle of vodka at Costco to, to see if I could try to make it and order some vanilla bean. But we all know what happened with my card there. So I'll just ration this until November when we go to the Caribbean and get some. Then I'm going to put a half a cup of milk in each of these. You guys, this is so good and it's so easy to make and it's full of protein and healthy stuff. And it's, I mean, even kids love it. It's like such a great treat. So I did that and then I'm just going to put like two tablespoons of yogurt in there. I'm just going to do that because, you know, I, I do take probiotics, but every extra probiotic I can get, I'm going to take. I'm going to add this in here. Sometimes I'll just do just this and honey, nothing else. Sometimes I'll just do this and maybe monk fruit, monk sweetener, nothing else. But now I'm going to do fruit instead as my sweetener. And maybe slice up a banana, a little bit of a banana in them and see how that does. If I ever need extra sweetener, I can use like, you know, a little monk sweetener, a little honey, little, um, sometimes I use... Blackstrap molasses, sometimes I'll do that. More uh, magnesium, potassium. I love the, actually the organic vanilla yogurt that they have at Aldi, but it was so funny, there was another guy and we were standing in the aisle and he's like, am I in your way? And I'm like, no, I'm not finding what I'm looking for. And he goes, me either. And I'm like, are you looking for the vanilla organic? He's like, yes. I'm like, oh, I bet they don't have it. So both of us kind of hunted, we didn't find it. So. I got the plain, I, I uh, 
I didn't get any milk. Milk was too expensive. So what I like to do is I like to buy organic milk when it's on sale and put it in my freezer. And then when I get enough, I like to make my own yogurt. But it was just too expensive. So I just got one of these so I could have some. I'll break a little bit in each. And then I'm thinking they should rehydrate it when they, because I sit these overnight. I'm just gonna put a couple pieces in each of them. I don't like to do too much fruit. I try to keep my, I do try to keep my carbs down. I know all you people that are keto, you keep them real low, but I I just try to watch mine. I, I have done several different things and it really hasn't made a difference for me. What really makes a difference for me is nothing, honestly, exercise. And I haven't been able to do that with my health lately. So I'm hoping, you know, with spring coming in and gardening that that will help a lot. So I'm just going to do this up. I'm going to mix these up. And then this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to put these in the fridge overnight. Or, you know, I do have farmer's porridge. So whenever I feel like this, if I don't feel like farmer's porridge, really what I like to do with these, or even like if I did make the sweet bread or whatever, if my kids were, my grandkids were coming, I don't know what they are. So I probably won't make it. But I like to have one of these with like a pickled egg. And I am planning on doing the pickled eggs. I'm feeling a little worn out and I have to work tomorrow. So I may not get to them today, but I like to have one of these with, with that. And that's a perfect breakfast for me. I still try to do the, oh, do the intermittent fasting. So I try to have like, you know, like a nice size breakfast, which that is, and then, you know, like a, a good dinner, which it's 4.30. I normally eat between now and six anytime. So whenever this bread is done, I actually honestly don't even need bread. I was making it because I thought the grandkids were coming over and I'll probably have some of that burger soup for dinner. And then I'll probably rest a little bit and then I'm gonna can it, can it up and then save some for the week. That is what I'm gonna finish up this video with. This has been a really fun, productive day. I haven't done a big cooking day really since we've done the pantry challenge because I just, I've had so many meals that I had made the freezer meals. So yeah, and then I love these little plastic lids for stuff that I just put in my refrigerator. Um, I just love them. They're, they're great. I believe I got them on Amazon. And so they, I got some wide mouth and some pint, uh, some regular size. They weren't very expensive. I think I got a pack for a few dollars. I'll see if I did. If I did, I can try to link them below. I'm not sure. I'll look and see. But I, they're great. I mean, I'm sure you can probably find them. You know, actually, I think I did look at Walmart and they were really expensive there. So I'll take a peek and uh, see. But yeah, so we're done with that. I'm gonna let my bread cook, the soup cook. I think I'm going to go sit down for a little bit and just take my, get off my feet for a little bit and we'll just keep watching the rest of the stuff after of course I clean this mess up, but all right, thanks so much guys. So now I'm going to try to take my soup and pressure can some so I can have some on the shelf. So that is what I'm going to do right now. I actually have some quart jars. I thought I'd try to do quarts. I normally bring the pot over to my island, but we'll see how this does. That's the bread machine talking. So I'm gonna fill these up, and then I will show you them as I get them in the pressure cooker, and then I will process them, and we will show you what we have. Okay, so these are my last two jars. Get the air bubbles out, and then I wipe off the rims. I do have videos on pressure canning for those of you who are interested. This is my Presto pressure canning, but really this is just a day today spent together in the kitchen. I am going to pressure, I'm going to bring the pressure up to where I need it to be in my area, which is between 10 and 12 pounds. It's hard for me to keep it rated exactly that. And then I'm going to process it. And then I will turn the heat off, let the pressure down, the cool all the way down, and then go from there. Here is what I have. I did quarts. So I have seven quarts 
And this is what I have left, which is plenty if the kids want to come for dinner. I honestly don't know that they're going to. I was excited about it, but I don't blame them. Darn snow. But anyway, so that's what we have now. I'll show you everything when it's done, you guys. I don't know if I'm going to do any more, if I'm going to do those pickled eggs today or another day. But thanks for hanging out with me in the kitchen. Like and share. Have a great rest of your day. Be blessed. So I was all excited thinking I was done in the kitchen for today. But I forgot that I had bought these two packs of mushrooms. And I bought these sweet onions and green peppers. And so I went in my freezer and I was like, okay, what kind of meat can I take out? And I'm just literally going to bake them up in my air fryer oven. So I'm going to spray my pan with this olive oil spray that I got. And I am going to dice up these onions, these green peppers. I'm going to put my meat down in the pan. I really wanted to have steak because I love steak and mushrooms. I found a pork collar steak. I don't know what that is, but that's from seven sons and I need to contact my farmer friend and uh, figure out my cow that I'm going to order from her because I just used up the rest of my beef my ground beef in the freezer I do have some canned ground beef and some canned chicken and I do still have meals but I do I was planning about April was April was about when I was thinking about ordering my meat that's probably getting pretty close here to when I I really need to order it so I'm just gonna chop these up put them in a pan bake them in the oven and then this is what I'll have with my soup for the week uh, probably toward also in between I have a thing of fried rice in my freezer and I thought that would pair well with my since I didn't get my sweet kale salad if y'all saw my holy haul video i'm gonna pair that with my uh the asian salad that i got so i thought that would be good so those will be my meals i think that'll be awesome it'll work great i will be have i have cooked for the entire week i might even have enough to freeze individual meals probably will actually so it'll it'll be great that's what i love doing these big kitchen days and then i'm set for a very long time so thanks so much you guys i will show you pictures but i did forget <laughs> i had more cooking to do <laughs> but hey it'll be done it's all good you guys saw what i went 10 weeks without grocery shopping and really i didn't do a lot of cooking either because it's days like these that take care of it all so be blessed Bye. So finishing up that meat, I have some turkey sausages and vegetables and some burger and vegetables and my canned soup. So these ones I have for the freezer and I still have five meals left to go in my fridge for the week with some leftover soup. So this is how I meal prep and then I, these are going to be covered and wrapped, put in the freezer and I will, here's one, two, three, four, five extra meals to go in the freezer. So that's how I cook ahead. Very easy way. Thanks so much for watching, you guys. Be blessed. Have a great day.